Hey, uh, Floyd Fernbeam here, and it's that time of year when the late summer nights start getting a little cooler, and uh, that reminds me that it's back to school time. Well, that in the uh, 25 back to school flyers shoved in our weekly newspaper. And uh, this year, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the kids, the teachers, the, the parents, uh, the legal guardians, the illegal guardians, uh, they're all facing some mighty strange circumstances, you know, uh, when it comes to getting back to school. I think the last time anyone had to deal with anything like this was back in uh, my school days uh, when we had the Turpox 83 virus come through. Uh, and it was pandemic. Uh, Turpox 83, that is uh, short for uh, Turkey Pox 1983. And the turkey pox is like chicken pox, but the, the little poxes that you get all over your skin, uh, they're much bigger. They're, they're real big. And uh, if you sniff on them, uh, they smell like turkey gravy. And in addition to the, the uh, poxes that you got all over your body, it just gives you horrible, horrible like abdominal cramps. And it, it makes you feel like you overfeasted and you're all like bloated and stuffed and, uh, and you're tired. It's just excruciating pain, you know, right here in the old uh, bread basket. And I remember uh, my one cousin, uh, she got the turpox when she was in the seventh grade, and uh, she said the pain was way worse uh, than when she gave birth uh, to the twins the year before. Uh, hello, Waylon and Galen, uh, if you're watching. And don't go getting the wrong idea and getting all judgy on her. Uh, she had the twins when she was in the sixth grade, uh, but she was 19 years old at the time. Uh, she was the family's slow learner. Uh, anyhow, during that turpox pandemic, uh, when we went back to school after Labor Day, uh, the school gave us a bunch of options to choose from. And uh, so we had the in-person school, which was uh, like a regular school, uh, except in the hallways, you know, you had to wear a mask. Uh, and then in the classroom, uh, they had like a little plexiglass dividers. So each kid had like a plexiglass all around them uh, so they couldn't be uh, breathing out the turpox viruses on each other. And, uh, well, I remember my one friend, uh, Kenny, I think he was allergic to chalk dust or something, because uh, he let out a real big sneeze. I mean, it, it was real big. It was one of them sneezes you can hear coming, because before the sneeze, there's like uh, three or four inhales, like, <gasps> you know, and you just know uh, something real big's coming down the line. Anyhow, he let out a sneeze, and by the time I turned around to say it goes in tight, uh, the sneeze juice, it was already running down the inside of that plexiglass window. Uh, and he couldn't see the chalkboard, you know, no more through that runny mess. So teacher uh, come over and she had like a pump sprayer and she sprayed down his window uh, with a mix of Windex and Lysol, which cleans and disinfects, uh, but with no streaks. Uh, and then she gave it like a, a good air drying, you know, real quick like uh, with his uh, Scholastic book catalog. And uh, he could see just fine then. And then another option we had was the remote learning option. And uh, that was very high tech at the time. Uh, we didn't have no internet back then. So teacher, uh, she would just leave her phone off the hook laying on her desk there. And since we was all on a party line, we just picked up our phones at the house there and uh, listened in on the lessons. And uh, it was real, real good. But I felt bad uh, for this one kid in my class because he lived, he lived like way far out in the sticks and he didn't even have no phone line. So he'd have to walk to the general store and it was a couple miles uh, and he had to use the pay phone there on the corner, which was fine. But, you know, he had to keep uh, feeding it nickels. Uh, and then it was not uncommon for him to spend three dollars and a half to hear his lessons each day and even more if he decided to stay on the line uh, for lunch and uh, recess. And then we also had we also had what they called the hybrid option and that was a thing where all the teachers was hybrids like like part one thing and part another thing like a hybrid like uh, for example a Diana is part donkey and uh, part hyena. That's a hybrid. So it's a Diana. It, it uh, acts like a jackass, but it laughs all the time like a hyena. You may know somebody like that. But you get the idea about what a hybrid is. It's part one thing and part another thing. Uh, like we had uh, Mr. Flumenstein, and he was part man and also part wolf, like a werewolf. Now, he didn't like, he didn't howl at the moon or nothing. Uh, he was just a really, really hairy fella. And we had uh, Miss Jamie's. Uh, she was part supermodel and part artist, uh, and she was uh, our art teacher, and uh, she was very easy on the eyes also. 
And uh, there was Mr. Uh, Alejandro. Mr. Alejandro, he lived way, way, way up on top of Buzzard Mountain there. And uh, he was part mountain man and part rock star. So sometimes during our phone lessons, uh, if the kids wasn't quite understanding what he was trying to teach, he'd break out, you know, the old guitar and he'd make up like an educational song for us. Oh, and then uh, there was Ms. Minial, and she was probably the first Ms. Uh, I ever met, and she was part flower child and part hippie chick. So she was all about teaching us uh, English and grammar, but, you know, uh, with peace and love. Uh, anyhow, them was the uh, three different options that the school offered. Uh, well, th there was uh, there was one other option that we tried for a while, uh, where you could do what they called the correspondence school. Uh, with that one, you got all your lessons through the U.S. Postal Mail, and they bring them, you know, right to the end of the lane there and stick them right in the mailbox for you. Uh, and then you'd fill out your homework papers and your quiz papers and your test papers and everything, just longhand like that. And then you'd bundle them all up and you'd mail them back to the school. Uh, but they quit doing that one because there was something weird going on with the mail or the teacher grading the tests or something. They called it greater fraud. That's right, greater fraud. Because uh, the kids were sending in their very best work. And still, they was getting C's and D minuses. So there was something fishy uh, going on there. And they never did figure out if it was the Postal Service or the Russians or the Chinese or what. Well, anyhow, I have rambled on long enough, uh, so have a blessed day. And if you're heading back to school, always try your best, uh, show your work, and remember, unmute yourself.